A video showing the final words and beheading of U.S. journalist James Foley at the hands of a British-sounding ISIS fighter. 14, 15, 16-year-old girls leaving their homes in the dead of night to fly to Turkey, cross into Syria, and join ISIS fighters as their brides. And young men raised in San Diego caught trying to get to Al-Shabaab. Why are Westerners joining terrorist organizations? That is the question on the Kogo News Live line. Dr. Aaron Saltman is a senior counter-extremism researcher at the Institute for Strategic Dialogue in London. She is on the live line with us. And wh- wh- how is it that these Westerners are joining terrorists? What is the appeal here? Well, what we try to do is is definitely not sympathize with them, but try to empathize. What does that process look like? And it's a real mixture of grievances, but also the pull factors. So what's on offer? What is this extremist group offering them? And the grievances are some really real things. We do see that a lot of minorities still feel a little bit isolated or alienated from larger communities. There's a perceived victimization of Muslims. There's the perceived Assad government attacking Muslims on large, and then the question about what what are larger Western powers doing to stop this, and that can create some real grievances. But that pull factor, they're offering a sense of adventure, they're offering what they say is spiritual enlightenment, and they're giving young people this hero narrative where they can actually be the hero in their own storyline. But let's talk about the girls who are leaving. Yeah. Uh, what's the reality for them when they get there? Well, obviously, the reality is very different than the propaganda. They're not used as fighters, so we don't call them foreign fighters. Um, They are expected, if they're unmarried, you're expected to get married within a three-month period. You are not allowed to leave the house without male permission, and you're not allowed to be outside of the house without a male chaperone. So it's a very restricted lifestyle for women. And how is it that they're... How is it that they are finding that appealing? Because it's not like that's a a big secret that that's what happens. I mean, you're going to be wearing a, a burqa when you get there. Well, it's interesting because they've really taken it as almost a feminist argument. They wouldn't use that word. That's a Western word. But not only are they being told that they'll find true belonging and sisterhood in this territory, but they're saying, look at the West. You see Victoria's Secret. You see the exposure of women as sexual objects. We are choosing to take the veil because we are refusing to be objectified and sexualized. So it's almost this bizarre feminist narrative. And actually, we saw a a play in a meme off of cover girl the makeup line where it said covered girl because i'm worth it and that's the message they're sending these girls so it's almost like it's a brainwashing cult it's definitely a process of radicalization can definitely be described as a form of brainwashing and we can equally say that these men are undergoing a similar process both men and women are they're taking real grievances and turning it into this global issue so you might have a local discontent and they're mainstreaming that into their cause on an international level Dr. Aaron Saltman, a senior counter-extremism researcher at the Institute for Strategic Dialogue in London. That is a mouthful, by the way, Doc. <laughs> um, now, what oh if, you know, if, if you're a parent and you are concerned that your kid could be targeted by, by these guys, how do you put up any kind of a firewall between them and what looks like a romantic, adventurous life? It's a lot about just posing the right questions, where the parent child dynamic is always going to be a little strong, especially for the age group that we see radicalizing. So you're dealing a lot with ages 15 to 25, which can sometimes be that the teenage era can be one where parents don't have great communication anyways. But what we're seeing is the reason extremists are winning in this recruitment is because when a young person has a difficult question to ask, like, what's going on in Syria? Who do they turn to for the answer? And they often don't turn to their parents, and they don't turn to religious leaders or teachers and the people giving very loud answers both online and offline tend to be the extremist voice so actually for parents a lot of it is trying to find information and asking your child as much as possible about the hard questions asking them what they think about what's going on in the world and having a dialogue it's that dialogue that's really crucial 